The next gland, the adrenal gland, is sometimes called the suprarenal gland because it sits on top of the kidneys and one of its hormones, aldosterone, specifically targets the kidneys. However, the adrenal gland has many other functions and it's probably best described by separating it into its two layers, the adrenal medulla and the, <coughs> and the adrenal cortex. The adrenal medulla is derived from embryonic neural tissue and thus produces and releases the catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine, which serve to produce sympathetic response on an organismal level rather than locally through neural response. Hyperfunction of the adrenal medulla is usually caused by a pheochromocytoma. Symptoms include hypertension, palpitations, tachycardia, glucose intolerance, excessive sweating, and constipation, all symptoms that we might expect from a fight or flight response. The adrenal cortex is subdivided into three regions of glandular tissue that each function to regulate together and separately metabolic activities, inflammatory and immune responses, sodium balance, gastric secretions, neural function, and activity of other hormones such as ADH, GH, and TH. <coughs> Disorders of the adrenal cortex are related to hyperfunction or hypofunction. Since this topic is about fatigue, we'll only cover hypofunction here. Hypofunction of the adrenal cortex can affect glucocorticoid or mineral corticoid secretion or both. Hypofunction can be caused by a deficiency of ACTH from the pituitary gland or by a primary deficiency in the gland itself. Primary adrenal insufficiency is termed Addison disease and is characterized by elevated ACTH levels with depressed corticosteroid synthesis and output. Manifestations of Addison disease are related to hypocortisolism and hypoaldosteronism. There can be a few different reasons for primary adrenal insufficiency or problems with the adrenal gland itself. These can include infections like tuberculosis, tumors, or bleeding or hemorrhage. With decreased cortisol, we can expect to see symptoms of weakness and fatigue since cortisol is commonly referred to as the stress hormone. Cortisol also has a major role in increasing blood sugar, so a deficiency will cause hypoglycemia. Decreased aldosterone will cause hypotension, which you already know well. If the adrenal gland is insufficient, um, <clears throat> if the adrenal gland insufficiency is severe enough, it can cause an Addisonian crisis. One odd manifestation of Addison disease is hyperpigmentation. It only occurs when there's primary decreased adrenal function because if the adrenal gland itself is malfunctioning, we'll see an increase in ACTH by the pituitary gland in an attempt to stimulate adrenal hormone production. It is the increased ACTH that causes an increased secretion of beta-lipotrophin and melanocyte stimulating hormone, and these two hormones cause darker pigment in epithelial cells. To test for Addison disease, we inject ACTH, which, if the adrenal gland is functioning correctly, will increase cortisol levels. This is called the ACTH stimulation test. I know, pretty creative, right? To help us narrow down the cause of Addison disease, we can use a CT or MRI to identify any necrosis, tumors, or hemorrhaging. Can you identify the hyperpigmentation in these pictures? What was the cause of hyperpigmentation again? Okay. <coughs> Do you remember the stimulating slash feedback loop from the thyroid gland? Well, this is pretty much the same thing. It all starts with the hypothalamus that produces corticotrophin releasing hormone, or CRH. That will stimulate the anterior pituitary to produce ACTH, which <clears throat> which in turn stimulates the primary organ, the adrenal gland in the cortex, to produce cortisol. An increase or decrease anywhere along the line will cause either a repression or stimulation from the other organs involved. Um, let's look at that on the next slide. If you're watching this PowerPoint in full screen mode, Try to predict the hormone levels depending on where the problem is originating from. 
Remember, the primary is the actual organ that releases the active hormone, in this case the adrenal gland. The secondary organ, pituitary, is the one that stimulates the primary, and the tertiary organ, hypothalamus, stimulates the secondary organ.